Welcome back. So we've spoken a lot about states, everything about states. We spoke about stateful versus stateless widgets, provider, getx, block, redux. We spoke about events. We spoke about all these different things. And for some of you, you would have watched all those videos and now you think, okay, I understand everything perfectly and that's all fine. Others of you, and I would have been in this crowd when I was first learning, would have watched all of those and would have thought, now what? <laughs> Which one do, you, do I use? What do I do? There are so many. Um, so in this video, what we're going to do is just conclude everything, wrap everything up and give you a bit of ideas of what to use and why. And yeah, so let's jump in. Uh, the first thing I do want to say is that you don't always need to actually jump ahead and use a state management solution. Now, normally I do recommend it, but there will be times uh, in my own apps, this happens all the time, when you will use state, uh, stateful and stateless widgets. There will be many times when you don't want the state to be shared between different widgets, or maybe if you do want the state to be shared between different widgets, maybe it's just gonna be from one parent to a child. And if it's just this quick relationship from one to the next, there's no need to create an entire block or to create a provider or whatever else. You don't need to overcomplicate it if it's not complicated. Uh, you can only, you should really only be jumping to the state management solutions when you start getting getting issues with stateful widgets, you know, when things are just falling apart and you don't know which variable goes where and where it's coming from and or when a when a parent is passing a variable to a child which doesn't use it and is only using it to pass it to its own child, that's when we need to start looking at state management. But uh, many times we can just use state, uh, stateful widgets. And on top of that, there will be some times when stateful widgets are pretty much required. Uh, things like with animations. If you want to have a custom animation with an animation controller, you need to have a stateful widget for that. Now, we can do more complicated things like we could hold a stateful widget, like an animation controller in GetX and provider in block but that becomes such a headache. It's much more trouble than it's worth, I think. So when it comes to things like animations, go ahead and just use a stateful widget. Now this doesn't mean that if you have a stateful widget, you can't have a block, you can't have GetX. These things are complementary. When it comes to your actual state management solution, normally just one, right? Um, or just one type, but you can have multiples of them. Like in my block videos, I had two different blocks in the same app. And this is really common, you'll often see stuff like that. Um, but when it comes to stateful widgets, it's quite common to have your stateful widgets and then separate from that, your block. Or it can even go together. You can have stateful widgets accessing your block and there's different reasons to do that. Um, so yeah, don't think that you can't use stateful widgets. And then the next question I often get is, so now that we learned all of these, uh, all of these state management solutions, which one should you use? And I know you guys are not going to like the answer to this. Just use whichever one you want to. There is no best. Uh, each of them have different advantages. Uh, personally, I really like block uh, because of this events driven architecture. I like events. I want to work with events. I don't like just working with variables and then having my my logic inside my UI that that doesn't feel right to me. It doesn't look good. That's, that's not what how I want to code. I want to have everything separated. So I want my state management to also hold my UI. So for me, block is perfect, but you might not like the complexity of this. You might prefer something simpler like GetX and that's fine. But the other thing I would add is just because you've seen these videos doesn't mean you can go into your workplace and say, all right, well, I like GetX. From now on, we're going to use GetX in our, in our apps. And then your boss or the senior dev is going to look at you and thinking, who is this guy? <laughs> he watches two videos on YouTube and now he thinks he knows all about states. Uh, in other words, your work might have a preference. And if your job place does have a preference, don't, don't be a smart ass. <laughs> don't argue with them. If, if they tell you to, to use provider, just use provider. If they tell you to use the block, just use the block. Uh, but that leads me to my next question. A lot of people ask me, which state management is a company most likely to use, right? If you go to work for a big corporation, which one would they expect you to use? So again, it depends on the company. The big ones I'd expect from a company would be provider, block, or just no state management. But that doesn't mean 
stateful widgets actually. Uh, the reason I say these three is because provider is actually recommended by Google. In fact, if you look at the original keynote in which they recommend provider, they recommend block and provider. Uh, but Block has kind of fallen out of favor simply because it's a bit more complicated. And then everybody was talking about provider and people kind of forgot that Google does also recommend uh, the Block pattern. Um, so as a result, a lot of companies will go, will just do what Google recommends. Uh, a lot of companies are kind of averse to using something which is untested or unproven. I spoke to a senior developer in, uh, in my previous workplace about GetX and he didn't like the idea simply because he had never heard of it and because Google doesn't recommend it. And what he told me, uh, I thought was uh, really interesting. He said that what he's afraid of is that we'll start using some state management, which is the latest, most you know hot thing. And then two, three years from now, a new, latest, easiest, whatever, hottest state management solution will come out and then people will stop maintaining the one we're using. So in that case, we will use we were building an entire app, which was going to be the backbone of the entire business. Uh, it's if, think of if you were working in a company like Uber or in Netflix or something like this. The app that you're building there has to last for years and years and years to come. So in that case, using something like GetX, which although it has a lot of stars, it has a lot of interest. It's still not. It's still kind of unproven. A lot of senior developers are quite adverse to that. They don't really want to try something new because they're afraid. What happens if GetX falls out of favor two, three years from now? Right. I still need my app to work. So am I then going to go back and rip out all my GetX code and insert a new state management? Because <laughs> if I've been working on this app for two years, that's a big app, and that is going to be a huge, huge headache to do that. Um, and as a result, there's another solution which a lot of uh, which a lot of uh, companies use, which is they might say to themselves that Flutter is still quite new, state management, you know, we still don't know what's going to be the predominant one a few years from now. So they might make their own custom one. Uh, they might just use streams and or RX Dart, something like that. We haven't looked at RX Darts, but it's um, an addition to streams. Um, and they might just build their own custom thing, which they will therefore, of course, have to maintain, but they know it will always be maintained by them. They know it's always going to behave the way they want it to behave. Um, and that might be something that they're interest interested in. For me, I think that's kind of a waste of time, but I don't make any of these huge apps. I don't have a huge team. In my own workplace, we have several people. We have less than 10 developers. Um, I'm not going to give you guys the exact number, but it's less than 10. And we kind of make a lot of small projects, right? We, we don't have this massive, massive thing. We make a lot of smaller projects. And although we do kind of work in teams, we, we don't collaborate too much. You know, like myself, I, I do a lot of the front end. I do a lot of flutter work. And then I have somebody else on the back end. So what I do on the front end, I, I can just kind of decide how I want to do it. And a lot of people working with startups or working with whatever else, their own stuff will be in a similar position to me in that I can decide what I want to use and I don't need to tell anybody, right? I don't need to message my boss. Hey, I want to use block. Is that okay? I don't need to message him. Hey, next time I want to try GetX, is that going to be okay? Because I'm the only one writing my code. I'm the only one reading my code. And if you're in that situation as well, go ahead and choose whatever you want to choose, right? There's no, don't let anybody else tell you what you should use. And don't let me tell you that, uh, you know, as I said, blocks my favorites, but don't think that just because I want to use block, you need to use block. You can use whatever you want and that's all fine. So to summarize, the best state management solution is the one your boss tells you to use. <laughs> the second best is the one you want to use. And other than that, just don't, don't worry about it. Don't stress about it. That's all it's going to be. All right, guys, so that was it for this video. And in fact, for this entire module. So I will see you guys in the next one when we'll start talking about networks. We'll start talking about uh, accessing APIs and all that stuff. It's going to be amazing. I'm looking forward to it. I know you guys are as well. But in the meantime, myself, Avidius, I'm heading out. Take care, guys.